Growing up, I was quite blessed. I said I grew up in a um, family that loved God, or we followed God. They taught me what they could teach me. I said I learned it at school as well, because I went to a, a, a school where they taught, taught us about God. I said I played an older boy as I was younger as well. And as the years went on, God actually started meaning a lot to me. I remember feeling quite emotional about God many times. And uh, it actually make, used to make me weep. Um, I remember as I was growing up, I'd go to confession on a Saturday. My mum would take up the confessions on Saturdays. And every time I went to confession, I'd feel, today's the day, I, I'm just going to walk out of here today. I'm not going to sin. And, um, and so I really prayed hard. I'd pray, I said, Lord, don't let me sin. <laughs> I want to change. I remember I used to sit there and I'd pray and I'd walk out of there feeling on top of the world. I'd feel like a million dollars. I had to be let down before the sun went down because I'd recall that I'd been to confession and I'd sinned. And so I was always quite disappointed that I could never please God. And that used to really shatter me, you know, because I knew who God was. I knew what he expected from me, but I just couldn't cut it. <laughs> I remember I had a specific moment in my life as a teenager that um, it really was a eye opener for me because I remember sitting there after confession one day and after I had sinned again, after continuously going to confession, I just continuously felt at this point that I just can't cut this. And I was really disappointed because as much as I love God and I wanted to please God, I guess it dawned on me that I was going to hell. And I remember saying to God, Lord, I'm really sorry. As much as I try to love you and I want to really please you, I can't do it. I'm really sorry I can't do it. And right then it dawned on me that I was going to hell. And I accepted that. And I, you know what? The funny thing about it was I knew I deserved it. I knew I deserved it because God is so, it was holy. He, he loved me. He died for me. And I just I felt like just a big failure in my life. I just thought, you know, God's given me so many chances, so many choices and to do right. And the more I tried, I knew I just couldn't do it. Uh, after that, knowing that I was going to hell, I do remember I always sort of feared God. I always, it doesn't matter what I did and how much I rebelled against God. I went down a road where I started hanging around guys that were dealing drugs. You know, they was, we used to hang around outlaw clubs, different outlaw clubs, and we'd go for rides with them. You know, we'd always feel like king, king hoodlums, really. I, I could use other words, but I won't use them where we just sort of like hit the road and just, we owned it, <laughs> basically. And people would fear us and they'd move out of our way and I didn't really care. I didn't care what people thought. We were one sort of people and they were another type of people. And uh, in that, it never took away that I knew God was watching me. <laughs> and because I knew I was going to hell, I was always torn between wanting to please God still, but I think in my own pain, knowing that I couldn't do it, I didn't care at the end, really, in a way. My wife, at the time, met a friend up the road from us who uh, was sharing with her all about Jesus. And she'd come home from her place and she'd be really excited to share all with me. I wasn't as excited as she was listening to it. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, it sounds pretty much normal. But the more she'd share with me, as the days went on, I started feeling, there's a bit too much Jesus here, isn't there? <laughs> and uh, I remember she sort of mentioned the name Born Again, and that was it. I said, Born what? And she goes, Born Again, and I said, so this is not the faith that we understand already? And she'd say, no. And I'd say, well then, whoa, no more. I don't want you to hit, I didn't want you to meet this lady anymore. I, I ban you from going over there. I don't want you, Jillian, don't go there. I don't want you to bring it home, I don't want to hear about it. I said, don't tell my kids about it. I said, straight away I thought, this is some kind of cult. I said, it snuck up on me, I didn't realise it snuck up on me so badly. I said, they don't believe in a different Jesus than we believe in. I really started liking what I was hearing from Janine about Jesus. Something inside me was actually getting excited about what I was hearing. It was, it was like it was truth to me, but I just didn't want her to know that. And so I'd go and share all this news with my parents and, and my, my family, and they sort of like rejected it. And I couldn't understand why. 
because it just sounded so true to me. But I think it was, it was more caught up with the born again. I think they got stuck on the born again thing that, that really was making it stumble. I just tried to get past that, but I couldn't get through them. That what I was trying to tell them. So I just kept telling them how everything I was hearing about Jesus and how and how much he how much he's done for us. Anyway, one night, one night there, I remember sitting at home and it was a normal night at home in my family place. Dinner, kids had gone to bed, and I had a phone call. It was my dad. And I answered the phone and, and I heard death words that night because my dad was that upset about um, me and my faith that I was following him. I hadn't committed myself to any faith, but just I was questioning it. And he said to me that night, I've had enough. He said, either wake up to yourself or change your name. I don't want to know you no more as my son and hung the phone up. I said I wept that night, I actually cried that night. I couldn't understand it. I sat down at the table and I said, Lord, I said, I thought you'd bring families together. I said, why are you tearing mine apart, Lord? I don't get it. And I saw Janine's Bible sitting on the bench over there, so I went and picked it up. And I sat in front of me, so I just wiped the tears out of my eyes. And I flicked it open. And uh, first time I opened my Bible, I'd never even opened a Bible. And I started reading Matthew 10:37. And it said, anyone who loves his mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. I said, what? And I read it ten times. And I just couldn't believe it. I just thought, what are you saying, God? Are you trying to say that I love my parents more than you? And as I tried to say the words, I realized I couldn't say them. I thought, you're right. I can't say them. I thought, I just, what's happening to me? This is weird. I just couldn't believe what I was reading. I just couldn't believe what I was experiencing at the time. It's been a 15-year journey since I come born again Christian. I can say it proudly, born again, because that's what I am. And I've had to face some hard times in those 15 years. I've had some great times. I've had to face some real difficult times. And uh, if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here today telling my story. And if it wasn't for the Lord, I'd never understand forgiveness either, because I understand how much I've been forgiven. They want me to forgive those who've hurt me as well. My name is Joe. This is my story. You can see I love my bikes. I love my family. But most of all, I love our Lord Jesus. And amen to that. <laughs>